Welcome to Sunrise. We are always, always pleased to have you here. And uh, for those of you who are new to Sunrise Session, uh, glad to have you amongst our, our friends. Uh, this is uh, an extraordinarily fun time for us uh, to do this four times a year and, and bring out our best and our brightest and ask them to share some, some thoughts and, and some of their energy with you. Uh, my name is Mark McClellan. And I'm the Vice President of, of Research and Dean of the School of Graduate Studies. This would not be possible without the partnership with Regents. And uh, Regents has been a stalwart uh, friend, provider, uh, and, and really committed to the idea that universities, educational institutions should be connected to society and, and done in a way where there's a comfortable exchange of conversation uh, of important ideas. So Sunrise Sessions are just one of our major forums that we do for sharing the impact of, of USU's researchers and scholars, our leaders, our artists, and they help us uh, just explain, if you would, uh, the important role uh, of, of learning and education in uh, society. We're incredibly excited to have Dr. Craig Jessup here, our Dean of the Kane College of the Arts, and he's going to be uh, walking us through some, some interesting vision and excitement, and I'm sure you're going to enjoy that. I will first say that, that uh, this guy has a stack of accolades, and, and uh, most recent, he was just named Educator Laureate in June by the Distinguished Concerts International of New York. That's in June. Congratulations, sir. But let me tell you a little bit of a story. I arrived here six years ago, and at the time, President Albrecht said, Mark, we really need to put some energy into uh, uh, graduate studies here, and uh, we need to uh, build some support, and it has to be novel, exciting, uh, uh, innovative. And um, uh, so I started looking around and started thinking through that, and one of the first conversations I had was with, uh, with uh, Craig. And uh, we started talking about this, and, and at the time he said, Mark, you know, I know you hear a lot about STEM, but the arts, the arts and humanities bring it, uh, nothing but value to, to the equation of what STEM is all about. And I fully agreed with him, and, and together we sat down and constructed the concept uh, of an art STEM fellow at the time. That fellow was brought to the state government as an illustration of what's possible when you really take a unique approach to graduate education. It led, led to the XSTEM fellows that included business, it included the arts, it included humanities, crossed with other, others, and then it led to much more extensive expansion of, of funding across all fields in graduate study. And that's because a certain dean had a gleam of an idea and said, I can help make something happen here, and I can do it standing on the shoulders of the arts. So Craig, we are incredibly indebted to have you here, and I, I know I, as well as everyone else, are excited to hear what you're going to be talking about. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I am truly honored to be with you today to speak about two of my favorite topics the arts and the power of the arts in our lives, and Utah State University. Uh, we're celebrating a special year that's coming up. The president of the university has declared this the year of the arts at Utah State University, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about that and why we're doing that. I want to thank, though, first of all, regents to Jim and Miguel for their kindness. We had a fabulous dinner last night. And it's true, they had to throw us out of the restaurant. We couldn't stop talking. And I thank them for providing this forum for Utah State University. I'm very grateful. I'm grateful to Mark McClellan, my colleague at Utah State. And his, uh, from day one, his partnership in the arts and the position of the arts in a university and in society. We've uh, <laughs> taken the theme is of Arts Elevate for our theme of Year of the Arts that it lifts, it inspires. And our uh, graphic design department have developed a whole uh, new typeset and font 
to use as symbols for the arts of Arts Elevate and the communication and the publicity for this. Uh, let's just briefly talk about the value of the arts. And I'll start with the bottom line because I want to end with the intrinsic value of the arts, the spiritual, the humanitarian value of the arts. But because we're the United States of America and at a time success is defined by the bottom line of what does it bring in cash-wise, let me give you a few figures. Arts and culture contributed $726.6 billion to the U.S. economy. This amounted to about 4.2% of the U.S. gross domestic product. Of all 50 states, Utah ranks sixth in total compensation for arts and for culture. Utah's percentage of state employment within the arts and culture sec sector is fourth highest in the nation. The people of Utah have always placed a premium on arts in our culture. In fact, the first public building that was erected, my understanding, was the theater that Brigham Young had constructed here in the valley. Arts was placed so high of a priority to those early pioneers. The nonprofit arts and culture sector in Logan contributes $31.3 million in total economic activity. This summer alone, with the Utah Festival Opera, the Old Lyric Repertory Company, and the various other events we have, in, in generates a great, great amount of economic activity for a ver fairly rural part of Utah. I, w I do want to say, I've always said, I, I'm a great admirer uh, of Cambridge University and Oxford, and have spent a lot of time in England. I like to say that Utah State University and Logan is the same relationship. Uh, that Logan to Salt Lake is like Cambridge to London or Oxford to London. There's a wonderful uh, sense of sanctuary and contemplation when you go up to the north. Uh, and I know that m there are many Aggies in this room, you know what I'm talking about. Utah State and Cache Valley is a pretty marvelous uh, sanctuary and the arts thrive in this area. This amount, 31.3 million, co the, this contribution is 10 times the national average for a city the size of Logan. We com collaborated with the Cache Valley Center of the Arts and, and Wendy Hassan and did a very thorough s survey this past year over the impact of the arts in the community. And this is where this information has com come from. I think you'd be hard pressed to find a any other community the size of Logan that has the artistic richness in a community like we have. And I must say, it's in large part, though not total, the impact of Utah State University and our arts program at the university that have a big effect on this. Now, not why we do it. We really don't do it for the economic impact. We do it for the quality of life that it brings. I look in this room, look around this room. Everything in this room is because of a creative artist. The carpets on the floor, the tapestries on the walls, the chandeliers, the cut crystal, the draperies. Everything is influenced by the arts. Now it combines with technology, yes, and te technology has an artistic need for it. But I don't know if people really, really realize what the art does in our lives and how every day we can't go any place without I being influenced by the arts. Also, how it touches the human soul. And I just have one little example that I want to show you. This is Michael Bingham. He's a graduate, a graduate of Utah State University. He's been teaching for the last several years at Mountain Crest High School in Cache Valley in the southern end of the valley in Hiram, Utah. He's taking a year off and starting a, a Master of Fine Arts program at Utah State. And he has uh, worked with all types of students and has transformed students' lives. 
Mark has brought to Utah State the TEDx talks. He produces them every year. And in a recent TEDx uh, event at Utah State University, Michael Bingham was one of our featured uh, presenters. And I want you to see this little clip from his TEDx talks at Utah State. This is Kaya. She's one of the happiest uh, people I've ever known. When she was in my class, however, we never really found a way for her to truly express herself. Um, then one day, I saw her zipping down the hallway, kind of weaving in and out of students, and I noticed that with her power chair, she had incredible agility. And my imagination said, why not create a way for her to draw with that chair? It was a small thing, but it's a simple thing that made a big difference in her life. Now she can freely draw. This is something Kay waited 18 years to be able to do. I had another idea. If she can draw with that chair, why not paint? So with the help of my friends at the USU Assisted Technologies Lab and uh, the Utah Divisions of Arts and Museums Change Leaders, they helped me pr uh, afford to be able to do this, um, I created this chair. And it's... Um, a fun chair that she can make her own artwork with. I call it a noble one. And so she and others like her can now paint and make her, their very own art. When I saw this video and saw his TEDx presentation, I have to say it went right to the heart because this was the opportunity for this young woman to freely express herself. She had had handicaps that had presented this is obstacles. She's one of the and uh, she, every human soul, has this need to create, and he was able to provide her with this opportunity of expression. We've been very grateful to uh, the Beverly Taylor Sorens Foundation that have established two endowed programs at Utah State, one for arts education for children, and then the other for arts education, art access for children with disabilities. And this is a result of uh, that assistance as well. And I'm very proud to say we're able to be so inclusive with the arts program at Utah State. Now, when I was a senior in high school, on October the 18th, uh, 1967, I was 17, I attended the opening of the Chase Fine Arts Center. It was the greatest event in my uh, memory of growing up as a child in Logan because I had always been involved in the arts my entire life. The Jessops are cowboys. I'm sort of the odd duck of the family. Uh, Dean Doug Anderson were born on the same day, December 11th, I'm gonna tell them the year, 1949, in the Logan Hospital. And uh, we graduated from Utah State together and went on to graduate work. And now we were back at Utah State as fellow deans together. But I often felt maybe I got mixed up in the nursery because I didn't really fit the mold of my cowboy ancestors. I just came out of the womb wanting to sing. And I had wonderful parents who made sure that I was empowered to go that direction. I have one brother. Uh, who was the football star. I was speaking with Mr. Lindley over here, and his father was Mont's coach. Uh, and we're as opposite as night and day. And the arts were, were where I found myself. And to attend the opening of the Chase Fine Arts Center was such a thrill for me. And to be now here 50 years later, and to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Chase Fine Arts Center, uh, has been a real thrill and an unexpected serendipity. You never know that how the journey of life is going to take you. So we have uh, went into a complete renovation of the Chase Fine Arts Center. The president of the university brought $11 million to the project, and we were able to raise through our advancement council and our director of advancement, Joyce Albrecht, uh, an additional 14 million, and we'll celebrate a $25 million renovation of the Chase Fine Arts Center. My goal, uh, Cash Valley didn't have really a true concert hall. We had a multi-purpose uh, theater auditorium, 
but not a true concert hall like a Bravenel Hall or like Libby Gardner Hall. And uh, my goal was to build a new concert hall, but the bottom line is it starts at a minimum of about $50 million. And uh, Stan Albrecht wisely said, Craig, could we possibly renovate the Kent Concert Hall? And uh, I said, yes, but we'd have to totally, completely gut it and start over. And he said, I think that's the way we should go. And I, he was absolutely right, because for half, much less, more than, less than half, uh, I'll show you the new facility. And we just happen to have the architects in the room with us today. So the renovated venues for the opening of the Chase Farm Art Center include the following. This is the new Danes Concert Hall. The Danes family came through and with a very substantial endowment as other o donors. And this will open October 18 of this year. There's cards on your tables. Uh, we're bringing in the, the Broadway uh, Tony Award winning actress and singer uh, Kelly O'Hara will be here. And we'll feature our Department of Music as well as the American Festival Orchestra and Chorus to open the new Danes Concert Hall. The Morgan Theater, this was named after Professor Floyd Morgan, one of the first uh, department heads of the Department of Theater, has had a complete renovation as well. This has served this community for 50 years and it's ready to serve at least another 50 years. The new Tippett Arts Gallery, Twain Tippetts was the first uh, head of the arts area in, at Utah State University and this gallery is named after him. Uh, Dr. Tippett's wife was the librarian at Skyview High School where I graduated from and knew her well. And I knew uh, uh, Professor Tippett's as well. This uh, has transformed the old Tippett's Art Gallery, if some of you remember that. It's doubled the size of the exhibition space and the new wooden floor is so much better for the exhibitions that are brought in there. This is the new atrium. For those and the courtyard, this is the Ron uh, Gibson family courtyard. Uh, and if any of you remember the old courtyard and the old entrance, there were some concrete steps that w went up into the foyer of the concert hall. We decided they were from the Greco-Roman period of history. They were collapsing and disintegrating. And this was the first step in the renovation. So we have this new atrium that goes into the foyer of the Danes Concert Hall and is a marvelous uh, addition to the courtyard as well. And this is the entrance from the interior that goes fr uh, fr from the atrium, th the new stairway that goes up into the foyer. And the picture you see at the top is now totally changed as it's a completely new foyer as well. Because we're opening this fall, as I said earlier, the president has declared this a celebration of the arts, the year of the arts at Utah State University. As you leave, there are little pins that you can put on. We hope you'll be in advertising, a walking advertising for us. And the, all of the cards on the table, please take, as we, you can see some of the events that are coming forward. Uh, I'm going to invite you to join us in Logan, Utah. So sometimes, I can tell you this, the, lo the road from Logan to Salt Lake is really short. But sometimes it seems like the road from Salt Lake to Logan can be a little longer. It's not that far. And I hope that you will feel, those of you who live in the Salt Lake area will come to all of the events that you want. We would be so honored to have you join us. Let me just give you a little sampler of what we have uh, coming. Our visiting artists and scholars series will include the following. The actor Patrick Page, you've m seen him on television and in the movies. He will be our Dean's Convocation speaker on the 25th of September in the Kane Performance Hall. Kelly O'Hara, she is Julie Andrews of today. She is the American answer to Julie Andrews. She received a Tony for a performance performance in the revival of The King and I. Renee and I saw it at Lincoln Center. From the minute the over 
overture started, tears were in my eyes because of this beautiful score of Rodgers and Hammerstein. And she is as amazing off stage as she is on. And she'll be there for the opening of the new Danes Concert Hall. I would say don't miss this. She's so spectacular. Then we're bringing the American Festival Chorus to Salt Lake City in the new Eccles Theater here in Salt Lake. And we'll bring with us Gentry, these three heartthrobs, uh, the, the, the young women and the, the women of the, of the state are knocked out by them, and the men enjoy them too. They're just fabulous. And it'll be, we'll do four performances in Logan. These Christmas concerts have been sold out and uh, each year, but tickets don't go sell out, uh, on sale for another couple of weeks. And then for the first time ever, we're bringing it to Salt Lake City in the Eccles Theater here as well with Gentry. So here's one example where you wouldn't have to drive to Logan. We'll bring it to you here. Uh, we have, of course, the incomparable Utah Symphony, Terry Fisher conducting. They'll be here on April 18th. I have members uh, here of the symphony, Jeff Counts and Hilary Hahn, who are here uh, with the symphony, and they've been dear friends for many years. Jeff actually worked with us at the Kane College of the Arts for a while, and we're very excited and hope that this will be an annual, if at maybe more than once a year event, that the symphony comes to Logan. Then we have the Mormon Tabernacle Choir coming in September of 18. Ron Gunnell is the assistant to the president of the choir, a dear friend of many years. Of course, my affiliation with the choir, it was absolutely essential to me that they be here to help open the Danes Concert Hall, and we're thrilled to have the choir join us as well. They'll give two performances, a matinee and an evening performance. And then the American sculptor Patrick Doherty will close out our celebration of the arts. This is the most amazing man. He takes uh, willows and sticks and creates these fanciful sculptures. They stay up for two or three years. Patrick Doherty will be here next week and we'll be selecting a site uh, for the sculpture to take place. And we're going to take him around the valley. We'll start, of course, on the campus of Utah State. And, but we want to show him other areas of the valley as well. And he and our community will gather together a year from now and we'll construct whatever comes up out of his mind. And by coincidence, it happened that he is also doing an installation in the Brigham Young University Museum of Art, an indoor. So Utah will have this unique opportunity to enjoy the incredible talent of Patrick Doherty, an indoor installation at BYU, and an outdoor installation at Utah State University. And we're very excited to have him. He'll also be our convocation speaker. So here's our website. If you have, uh, you can go on at any time and see what's happening uh, during our celebration of the Year of the Arts. I um, just want to th thank again Mark and Regents for this opportunity. I've spent, as I said at the beginning, a lifetime in the arts. And first of all, just because of what it did for me, how it made me feel, uh, I can remember my first grade teacher, Mrs. Floyd, in Millville Elementary School, could play the piano. She'd wheel the piano in and we'd sing, and I was in heaven. Once she brought out a uh, recording, gave us a sheet of paper and a box of crayons, and said, I'm going to play a recording for you, and I want you to take a crayon and do anything you want. Just draw whatever comes into your mind. So she put on a recording, and I heard for the first time in my life, Tchaikovsky's 1812 Overture. And it happened, I, th I remember it clearly, it was a red pencil. And I, th that I thought that was sort of cosmic in, in hindsight that this Russian composer and I'm drawing with my red pencil. When it finished, she said, now put your crayons down. I'd like Craig to come up here to the room. She had an easel and a much larger piece of paper. And she said, I want you to see what Craig does when the music plays, which totally shocked me. 
She put it on again, and I did my thing. Mrs. Floyd, Virginia Floyd, of Millville Elementary, lit a fire inside a little boy that never, ever has gone out. In fact, it probably burns brighter now at 67 than it did as a six-year-old. And I'm so grateful for my teachers, and I'm grateful that I've been able to spend a life in the arts for what it did for me personally and what I know it has done for other peoples. For That's the reason we do this. Uh, thank you very, very much for your time. I'm, I'm open to any questions any of you want to ask. I turn the time back over to Mark.